Hi again, everybody. Neil Malik from Knack Trading, bringing you another Everyday Office video. Today's video is about how I accomplished this. It is an animated scatter bubble chart in PowerPoint. And as you can see here, when I hit forward, the timeline moves from 2013 to 2014. It grows. The bubbles also shift. So I'm going to hit forward again. Uh, you can watch the timeline move forward from 2014 to 2015. And you can watch as each of the different bubbles shifts. It changes sizes. And ultimately ends up in where we are in 2017. So this type of smooth animation of the companies that we work for versus our competitors, uh, products that we're selling, really anything in the, in the world, helps us to see how things are shifting over time. And we're going to do this using a tool called the Morph Transition in PowerPoint and also the ability to break a chart apart into its component pieces. Because right now you can't animate a chart like this inside of a PowerPoint slide deck. But what you can do is you can take a PowerPoint chart, break it up into its pieces, and then animate those pieces as much as you like. So here's how I made this happen. The first thing you'll see over here is over here on the left, I have a slide where I created different timelines. To create a timeline, all you've got to do, and you know, you can make all sorts of different timelines, but this is a timeline where the orange marker grows, sort of covering up the white part of the timeline and filling that gap in. So to make this happen, what you do is, of course, you make a black bar. So I'm going to go to the insert tab up here at the top of the screen, make a new uh, rectangle here. And uh, again, you can make any color you want, but I'm going to go with black with no outline around the outside edge. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap the thing that needs to be cut out of this rectangle. So I go back up to the insert tab and, and the first shape I'll insert is a rectangle for this little line through the middle part. There we go. Make sure that it has a fill that's easy to see like white and uh, I'm going to go no outline so that you can really see the size of that line. And maybe you want it a little narrower. I'll just go ahead and tighten this up just a touch. I'll go ahead and make the height to 0.03 maybe. And then we can highlight both of these two simultaneously. Just drag across them and use the align uh, middle option here to make sure that the strip is right through the middle of the rectangle. Now the second part is that we need the little bubbles here or you know some kind of markers. Maybe let's do diamonds this time around that sh uh, show you where the year is. So again we go to insert, we pick a shape of some kind and I said I wanted diamonds so I'll use a square here, a rectangle, make a tiny little square and then rotate that thing until it's just right. And again, I'll fill it with white and have no outline color. And then I just need to duplicate this and then put that one over here and then duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And then what you can do here is you can highlight all these elements simultaneously just by dragging across all of them. And on the align dropdown menu, you can use align middle. Now I want to make sure that the diamonds are spaced out evenly. So I'm going to take this diamond and put it out here. Then hold down shift and click on all the diamonds at the same time. And under that same align drop down menu, you can use distribute horizontally to make sure that there's the same amount of gap between each of the individual elements. So now what we're going to do is a tool in PowerPoint that allows us to cut out um, the, the white parts from the black part. So I just drag across the whole thing again, selecting the black bar as well as the diamonds and the strip that I've got there. 
And on the Format tab up here at the top of the screen with Drawing Tools, you'll see that I have Merge Shapes and that I can subtract. And notice what that does. There's no more white there where the diamonds and the strip are. Now it's just a hole through the black bar that shows you the background. So now we're going to go ahead and put a white strip behind this. I'll go back up to insert, insert a nice uh, simple rectangle here, the full width, like so. Again, make sure that's filled in white with no outline. And I'm going to duplicate it. Control D to duplicate this shape. Line it up right on top of the original. Perfect. Make it orange, fill it with orange instead of white, and then reduce it down to just fill the space. Let's see here, I need to make sure that it's lined up. Perfect. Okay, so now I click on the white bar, hold down the shift key and click on the orange bar, and use the send to back feature, and there it is. So now I can click on this orange part right over here and just make sure that it just fills up to that first diamond. There's my timeline, and I can use this, copy and paste this into anything I like. Next up, as you can see over here on the left, I have these slides hidden that have the different um, years on them. 2000, what is it, 2013, 14, 15, 16, and 17. If you'd like to download this slide deck, uh, go ahead and follow the link to the blog post about this, uh, this tutorial, and you'll be able to download it and see how I started off. Okay, so I'm here on slide number three. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate slide number three, control D, and unhide that slide. On the slideshow tab, unhide the slide. And I'll go ahead and take this timeline out because we made one that we like. Go ahead and do that, good. All right, so now we have 2013, 14, 15, 16, and 17 right down here at the bottom. And I'll just go over to that timeline I just created, highlight everything, copy it, and then on slide number four, paste it. And just slide it down into place. Now, if it is covering up the years, well, as you can see mine is right now, I'm just going to use the Format tab and send that to the back so that I can have the years on top. Now, I probably want to take a second here and line up those years so that they make sense with the diamonds, so right about there. And I'm just going to do either end. I'm not going to bother with the ones in the middle because I can easily make sure that they are horizontally distributed. So 2017 is lined up. I hold down shift and click on 2016, 15, 14, and 13. I'm going to use this arrange drop down menu down to align and I'm going to align them top and then go back to arrange, back to align and distribute them horizontally. That'll just make sure that the gap is perfect in each one of those instances. So there's my timeline looking beautiful. And this is the first version of my slide. Fantastic. Next up, I need to convert this from a chart. Notice here if I click directly on this chart up here at the top of the screen, there's chart tools. I can't have this be a chart right now. It needs to actually be these bubble shapes sitting on this grid. Now, a quick pointer about this, if you've got the same version of PowerPoint than I do, your uh, scatter chart, your bubbles might actually be semi-transparent. So before you go through this process, you have to make sure, you have to guarantee that your bubbles aren't semi-transparent. Otherwise, uh, PowerPoint will actually turn them into solid color squares, uh, which is fine, I guess, but it's not exactly what I'm going for here. So I'm just going to click on my bubbles here hit control one on my keyboard, which will open up my formatting tools over here on the right. And in my paint bucket here on the right, I'm just going to make sure that we use a solid fill color. It really doesn't matter what fill color it is right now because ultimately I'd like it to look different than this. Uh, but you know, maybe just a simple solid white is fine. 
And then uh, I'm just going to go no border around the outside of those bubbles. So that means that these bubbles will be converted into shapes really cleanly as opposed to getting mangled uh, because they were semi-transparent. And then all you've got to do is copy the chart using control, excuse me, not copy, cut the chart using control X. And then on the home tab, you want to go to the paste drop down menu. Go down to paste special and choose to enhance, uh, choose to turn this into an enhanced meta file. Enhanced meta files are pictures that can be ungrouped into their necessary shapes. So that's what we're shooting for here. Enhanced meta file, click OK. You can see it doesn't exactly put it right where it was previously, so I'm just going to square this up a little bit. OK, that looks good. And the easiest way to see what's happening here is to go to the Arrange drop-down menu and go down to Selection Pane, this last option at the bottom. And when you go there, you'll see that this thing that's on my slide right now is called Picture 1. So I need to go to the Arrange drop-down menu and choose Ungroup. And what that does, as you can see here, it says, Are you sure? Click Yes. And here, everybody, if yours is not still circles like mine is, it's because your shapes were semi-transparent and it didn't like that. Uh, but as you can see over here on the right, this becomes group four with the different ovals inside of it. I don't want groups. I want them to, to be completely independent. So I go to the Arrange drop-down menu and choose Ungroup again, and there you can see each one of these is its own individual shape. And in fact, I could take the time and, and name them. You know, if this was one of our competitors and I wanted to give it the name of the competitor, I could come up here and call this one, you know, Acme Corp. And uh, this one's another competitor called uh, L&T. And this one is us. And we are called uh, Dirksen. Norwich and etc. You get the picture from there. So you can name these shapes if that helps you keep track of them. Most important thing here is now we can turn this into something that looks good for us. So maybe uh, this company, Acme Corp, this is our biggest competitor and we want to really highlight these guys. So I'll go up here to my drawing tools and I'll format this as something that, that kind of stands out. Maybe like this or like that. Yeah, that's good. And then these other littler ones, these are also competitors, but we're not as concerned about those guys. So maybe we'll make them sort of a, a darker color so it doesn't stand out as much on the dark background. And then this one is us right here, so we'll make us orange, so we also stand out. Okay, so now we've got our 2013 chart pretty much perfect. If, you know, you want to add some text or, or whatever you want to do, feel free. You know, that's great. But now comes the point in time where we have to say, how do we turn this into the 2014 chart? And then later into the 2015 chart, and 2016, and then 2017. So the first step is to duplicate the slide we've already got. So go over here to slide number four and we hit control D to duplicate. There's our second slide. Now on our second slide, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my indicator up on my timeline here. So it's no longer 2013. Now it's 2014, just like that. Okay, so now this slide I know is 2014, but unfortunately it's the same chart from 2013. So let's go into our hidden slides where we have that chart for 2014. So this is 2014's chart. You can see here I formatted it in such a way. You see what I did here? I made a filled in circle with a nice bright border around the outside edge. So it would be really easy when I was trying to size things up to be able to see where the circle was, where the limits of the circle was. So I'm going to click on this chart, copy it, and bring it into this 2014 chart that I'm working on by using Control-V to paste. Now I can go ahead and line these up, just sort of square them up, resize it a bit, make it a little bigger. Okay, so that's fine for right now. You would do a better job than that, but that looks fine. 
Notice over here in my selection pane that I left up and running. It's got chart 28 right up here at the top. I'm just going to drag it all the way to the bottom because the chart is only there so that we can size things up, so we can line everything. So now I take the different bubbles and I try to line them up with their chart buddy like this. And if I start to realize I need to resize, you know, if something's a little bigger or a little smaller, I can do that. But basically at this point, I'm just eyeballing. Now what you could do is you could copy and paste the, new, the chart in as shapes, and then you can make sure that the shape sizes match. But for the purposes of getting this video done in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, and I'm going to do it in much less than that, um, we're just going to do it by eye right now and size it up and line it up and size it up and line it up. Size it up, line it up. Again, you could be as detailed about this as you like, or you can be a little sloppy. Probably want to get it right if you're going for a promotion. Okay. That shape is too big. Beautiful. Now, I don't need this chart anymore. I could leave it here and turn the eyeball off on the side, but I'm just going to go in, into chart 28 and literally just hit the delete key to get rid of it. And now watch what happens. I'm going to go to slide number four and start the presentation with shift F5. So this is 2013. You can see the timeline at the bottom says we're on 2013. You can see the little bubbles. We could have added text or whatever we wanted. But now when I hit forward, you can see it just jumps forward. That's not what I want. I could have jumped forward without doing this whole thing with shapes. So all we've got to do here is go to slide number five, go to transitions at the top of the screen and add a morph transition. See that right there? I tested it out. Let's go ahead and make it a little faster. Let's make it one second of duration for that uh, timeline. All right, so starting on slide number four, Shift F5 to launch the presentation from that moment in time. Using the forward arrow, we can see those things grow and spread into spot. Back arrow, forward arrow, back arrow. The timeline grows and shrinks. The bubbles grow and shrink and slide, helping us to see where everything is. And all you'd have to do at that point is simply repeat that process over and over again. You can see here slide number 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. That's all I did was increase the orange bar on the timeline and move these bubbles around. Then on slide number 11 here, we have a morph transition that takes one second. Slide number 12, morph transition that takes one second. 13 and 14 are the same. Now what's kind of interesting at this point is I could highlight slides 11, 12, 13, and 14 and tell them not just to advance after a mouse click, but if I want to, I can click the checkbox for after here and I could increase this to, you know, let's say two seconds. So on every slide, every year, we'll sit there, oh, let's go five seconds. Okay, so starting on slide number 10, we hit Shift F5 on the keyboard. And now we're sitting on 2013 and we begin our presentation. We're talking about where everything stood in 2013. And then maybe a new CEO came in, maybe a new marketing team uh, started up a, an implementation. And we hit the forward arrow. Now, Morph immediately takes us to 2014. We can talk briefly about 2014, but then the animation immediately kicks in after five seconds and takes us to 2015. And then after five seconds, it takes us to 2016. And then after five seconds, it will take us to 2017 and show us the end result. So using the morph transition, to grow shapes, to slide them around, can be really cool when you combine it together with this idea of taking something like a bubble chart, for example, and breaking it into its components.